Hey everyone, as you can probably tell by the uh, title, welcome to Complex Mox Episode 1. Today we're going to be looking at this custom flight simulator that I built entirely out of Lego. So let's get straight into this. Um, so first off, we're going to start Meet Lego Flight Simulator X. And yes, I realized after I named this that there's an actual flight simulator called FSX, which is Flight Simulator X. Uh, no, I have not played it. Yes, I would love to. No, I'm not saying it's best. No, I'm not saying your opinion. Um, but yeah, uh, this is actually the second prototype for this that I built. And it's way better. I haven't built a video or done a video on the first one. Um, but this is, this is much more improved. Uh, so let's get right into it. So you can see I have my Lego 767 on here. I will do a, uh, tutor or a tutorial, a uh, video on my airport, which is currently behind me right now. Uh, I know you guys love the floor, so I'm on the floor. Uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry, <laughs> the floor is just easy. Um, but yeah, so let's do this. First off, we're gonna turn on our battery box. I'm just using a, well, relatively complicated joystick here, built out of Lego. I'm sure you've probably seen these sometime, at least on YouTube, at least I have. Um, but currently, the switch is selector mode, so currently, we're just kind of in, in, in neutral, I guess you would call it, but uh, it has control over the pitch and the roll of the plane. And um, as we also look around, you can see there's also a handy little altimeter here to tell you how plain your height it actually is. And uh, these don't say how high it'll actually go. They're just numbers to see what, you know, what your cruising altitude is. Because, you know, I do have uh, multiple planes of various scales, but that's just a little idea uh, for you to use your imagination on uh, how high your plane's going. So, in order to actually use this altimeter, yes, it is functioning. Um, we got to flip the switch on, and that turns the simulator into ascend mode, and that'll let the plane actually ascend into the sky. Uh, this uh, is also, this is ascend and descend and control. So this is basically control over everything. This is control over just these plates, which you saw me demonstrate before. So let's switch it on to ascend mode, and you can see just watch the altimeter as I pull back on the joystick. But here you can see we have ascended, switch that back, and we can rotate our plane. But you guys were just looking at the altimeter. What I was paying attention to was this. So you can see the plane is now magically in the air. And I did not alter this. This machine did it as I had, you know, put it into ascend mode. So, rotate this back. And, you know, why not we show you guys uh, descending? You watch the ascent. Let's do the descent. Flip that back. Let's do, you know, just a casual descent. So, if you don't know how a plane joystick works, you push it forwards, then knows that the plane tilts down, you push it back, then knows that the plane comes up, and that allows it to ascend and descend. Uh, we're in ascend mode, and I just accidentally pulled back on the plane. So, obviously, yes, it tried to go up. It cannot go up anymore. So, let's descend back down. There you can see the plane's going. All the way back down, I'm watching the altimeter, back to zero. And we can rotate it back, and there we go. Um, and yes, I, I didn't demonstrate it a lot, but you can uh, roll the plane doing all the functions. You can do like all the functions at once if you really want to. But now, you saw how it works. We're going to get into the, uh, you know how this thing works. I'm not very good at English or grammar. Well, I'm not saying school, 
but I'm saying just talking and normally I'm not very good I don't script my videos so uh, yeah there you have it there's a little tidbit we'll just go through a quick time lapse of me deconstructing this all right so now that we got this all ripped down we can start to see how this works so uh, right off the bat you can see this is the stick for the um, altimeter and you can see if we flip the switch on what happens so we pull back and you see these actuators move which in turn raises this whole arm it's got these pieces here so it can basically keep this platform level because it's got two layers and these are pivot points here 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 and here and here and here um so a lot of pivot points but that lets it do that so as it's sitting down you can see that the altimeter moving and you can see that starting to raise off the ground so now the altimeter is like at what 1500 feet yeah about that so that's what it's pointing to but if we pull all the way back now we're all the way at 2000 feet these actuators can't possibly go anymore and at that point you stop because you just you can't go any higher oh, excuse me we bring us all the way back down to zero you know that and this is pretty flat and uh so now you can see all of this a couple of gears here to take the extra large motor and give it way more torque than it already has um because you know uh, uh a little bit of torque is not enough but more torque is more actually this is a lot of torque well, a lot of torque is not enough, so I have a lot more torque, you know. <laughs> kind of sound a little weird saying that. Um, simple construction, you know. This is a little bit more complicated, so that these do not fall apart. Uh, this is only the second prototype, but you can see how this works. Two layers. This receiver just sits on a little plate here and uh, here's the actual movable plate up here and you can see there's two actuators but you know you see that they're looking in the same way but the heads of the actuators are actually 90 degrees offset so we get more control about this so if we pull it back you can see this pulls the whole thing down by this pivot point right here which happens to also be where this actuator is located so that when this pulls back the actuator can tilt back with it but if we look at the other actuator you can see it's connected to this piece which can move within this um, 5 by 7 bracket so that's here, the pivot points is here and here. So that means when we rotate it, it's just expanding or extending and retracting, which gets us that tilt motion. And then you can see right up here, this is the platform in which the plane sits on. And then we just have a little plate with some uh, jumper plates on it. So I'm uh, two by two jumper plates. And that's basically it. And uh, since we have it all stripped down, I might as well show you how to put it back together. So first step, slide that back to the altimeter. Connect on those pieces, pretty easy. Just gotta snap on that piece right there. And then take these pieces. This one goes on this side. Just kinda pop him. on there, pop this guy, right on there, and then the plate just sits on these uh, inner holes here, that allows it for this plate to be completely centered through this whole center line. So now where these studs are creates an imaginary line 
that goes all the way across and that follows that line follows down these gray pieces falls down the, where the altimeter is falls down the middle of this that's where everything's placed on and this is right in the line of that so now we can go and we can test it make sure that's all working Yep. So the sense is all working. So that's pretty good. So chances are uh, you all need to remember what the 767 looks like flying on this. But now we're going to try a few other planes. Enter the um, F-35B Lightning, Lightning 2, whatever you want to call it, relatively long name. Uh, this is one of my misfit planes, as I call them, because they're not one uniform color. They're just random pieces, well not really random pieces, selected pieces in a variety of different random colors. So why don't we go? We're going to go up to, you know, these planes fly relatively low, so we'll go up to about a thousand feet. Right in between, that's about a thousand two hundred right there. Flip the switch back, and then you can see the plane is already off the ground. Stick your hand down here, already gone off the ground. We can rotate this guy around. You know what? Why not we level him off? Just like that. Perfect. And since we're up here, you know, let's swap the planes for another one. Enter the CF-144 Tudor. These are the planes that the Snowbirds use. And uh, I actually built this as a bit of a memorial piece because if you saw the news and you're in Canada, one of them actually crashed in Kamloops the other day and uh, the pilot actually died. So, I built this as a bit of a memorial piece, but it's heavier, so I'm kind of using this example. Also, I have a friend who's a pilot, whose uh, friend is actually the guy who survived that crash. So there you go, there's a little bit of tidbit behind this snowbird's plane that I made. But we're up here, so we can do our thing. Now we're gonna uh, kind of glide back down and get you guys on a different angle here. Put you right there. You guys can see what it's like from the side. Again, we're just gliding down right now. Just gliding down. We can dive down, but we were just gliding down at that time. Make sure all of our functions are still usable. There we go. So, hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Look behind this flight simulator. If you want building instructions, let me know. I will try my best to take some detailed pictures. I cannot make building instructions completely, unfortunately. And yeah. See you guys in the next one. Hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for more complicated builds, complicated mocks, and future uploads. See ya!